back December. That December was the first time I did a more sound gig. Mm. Yes. First time. And there was a huge problem. Why is that? Of valuation. Of how uh -huh. I saw myself and how. You see, there is how you see yourself. Yes. And then there is how another company sees you. Yeah. Okay. And I remember saying, this is not good valuation. And, uh, and so, may I continue doing my weddings? At that point, there was a new radio station opening. Mm -hmm. One FM. What? You remember One FM? Yes. One FM was opening. Adele has worked there. Yes, Marcus head of Solang. music was Wesley. Oh, yes. Wesley calls me. DJ Wesley calls me and says, Hey, Kroba Niaje, I want you to come and do something here. As, as we are starting, we don't have a budget, but just come. Wesley's my boy. I'm like, I'm going to support your vision for now. Mm. Let's talk six months down the line. But for now, I'm going to support your, vi your vision. So I do mixes. I'm telling you, One FM had very good marketing. Mm. Very good branding. That first one year, mm. they really branded themselves. And because of me playing there, I got very many gigs. Mm. <laughs> so did you have, like, would, would did you have, in that situation, yes. did you go and play at the venue? Yes. Or do you just send the mixtapes that you've already created? No, no, no. I would just re record mixes at home and send them. Okay. Yes, I would record, uh, it was a three-hour show. Was it a three-hour, two-hour show? So I would record... Um, 14, 14 mixes or 14 minute mixes, like many of mm, them, mm -hmm. because they would play in quarters. I get then it. commercial breaks, commercial breaks, commercial breaks, like that, like that. And like you are that. getting paid peanuts for that? Nothing. No paid. Visibility is what I was So you were putting DJ Crowbar on the uh, ones and twos? Yeah, I was just pushing it and pushing it hard and stuff, but that translated to gigs to me. Oh, it did? Yeah. You know how to commercialize visibility. Okay. What's the key in commercializing visibility? You want everyone to know that you are a big deal. Mm. You want everyone to know that you are a big deal. You're not just anyone. I am a big deal. Mm. Yes. And that's why I am here. I am here because I'm a big deal. But how do you make people know you're a big deal? Because you, 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 you push your show for people to listen. So everywhere I went, I would tell the MC, tell everyone here to listen to 1FM. On this time, I play live. Okay, I get uh, it. So everywhere I went, I would just push. I would just push. And oh. the mentality of being on radio is big. Mm. The mentality of being on air is big. And you know that feedback, if two people call yeah. out of a hundred, yes. it's two people who've called within a show and, they've, say, and they've said, Kroba, we really like yes. it. Yes, there you go. Okay, I get it. So, visibility. And that's how I commercialize that visibility. And what so, did that mean off-ground? You do more weddings, more... Uh, it would just translate to more weddings. Sana, okay. sana, it would translate to more weddings. Okay. Yes. And then, let me tell you another thing. Out of me being in Kubamba in 08 and 09, um, in 08 and 09, what happens is the audience Kubamba would target in high schools, eh? Between that era of maybe... 2003 to 2007, mm. they are now grown-ups or Which matures, was... and they are now planning to settle down. Mm. Guess what happens? When they are being entertained, we are the ones entertaining them. Mm. When they are planning of settling down, when they are thinking of DJs, who are they thinking? Exactly. I'm telling you that translated to very many gigs, bro. Oh, Never joke with high school ministry. Yep. Yes, that translated. I remember, I remember this story and it was a very powerful story. I don't know whether Owen shared it when he came here. When Owen was launching his album at... KCC. Not, not KCC, Valley Road. Yes. And it was sponsored by, was it, I can't remember this product. Was it nice and lovely? There was a product it was sponsored with. Mm. Do you know how that sponsorship came through? Mm -hmm. Owen had done a high school mission like four or five years ago. I'm at eight. Mm. And those people left school, went campus, got a job, found themselves in a position of power, and they said, we're going to sponsor you. Were, you were. Never joke with high school ministry, bro. Yeah. I've seen it. I've felt it as well. Even a lot of the audience uh, who, who watch CTA yes. are from that period of yes. A lot of them know, oh, you came to my high school. A lot of there corporate rooms are entered to train. I'm like, oh, yeah, the guy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Never joke with that. I never take it lightly. Me, I meet very many people who say, I knew you when I was a kid, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, when I was in high school, when I was this, when I was this, my mom. Now, nowadays, it's my mom is your fan. 
nimeweka bro <laughs> let me tell you a funny story the other day I mean an Uber and I'm having this chat with the Uber guy and he says ah Groba Groba it's you and then we are talking and you know the way you used to listen to me when he was a kid and stuff and stuff and stuff and then I pause and I ask him hey bro how old are you and then he says I'm 38 I tell him bro I'm 38 too <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> when, and then he goes like Man must I must have, have been listening to you a long time ago. Well, I mean, it's true me have been DJing for many years. Mm. So high chance when you began maybe you, uh, maybe this thing entered your life around 08 there. Mm, mm, and said mm. yes because I used to listen to you on Hope. Yeah. And so in his mind this guy is a senior. Yes. It is until we go like oh my god. We are peers. We are peers bro. You are you realize that even you your kids people look at me and they think I am 40 something yeah <laughs> you're 38 now yeah I'm yeah, 38 now so where are we to go oh, nine. so we move we continue i continue with this thing after six months i notice there's no money at 1 fm i tell Wesley it's been real me i'm off okay we are done either way i was getting married in August mm. September 3rd was our wedding of of of, oh of 2010 2010 2010 2010 okay. yes yes as we get married start marriage life i continue with my life i do gigs september november october deck deck december that december was the first time i did a more sound gig mm. yes first time and there was a huge problem why is that of valuation of how uh-huh. i saw myself and how you see there is how you see yourself yes. and then there's how another company sees you yeah okay and i remember said this is not good valuation i'll do this gig to prove you that i'm worth this other amount mm. yeah, because me i was asking for six digits mm. i remember that time i was, me, I was, me, I was a tough guy yeah you are i remember it very well yeah. but, but in retrospect i'm just beginning to see you are also not scared of No, it's okay. Ah, I'm not scared it. of that. There's a lot of people who the fear is yes. because of situation. I understand what it is. You're being offered, let's you're being offered yes. 150 Gs, but you believe yes. minimum I should get is 300 Gs. Yeah. Oh, you're being offered 80 Gs. Yes. You like me, uh, give me at least 200 Gs. Like, There that's, you go. that's 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 minimum. And so, and so I remember I DJ that gig and I say the next gig you're giving me, it has to be three digits. The next gig you're giving me has to be a three digits number. And we closed it. I never did a more sound gig for two years. Ah, mm. yeah, me, me, I said I'm not entertaining that mediocrity. Kufanya gigs are fifty, seventy. Ah, mm. I'm not doing that nonsense. Mm. Mm. I'm not. Mm. Eh? And I stayed away. Either way, let's continue. Twenty ten comes to an end. Twenty eleven comes in. My blessing comes and finds me in February. So you yes. get married now. You move. You move from. Yes, how and Danny. And then we move. Me and my wife when we get married, we begin life in Don Home. Mm. So we stay Don Home for about three months. We don't like that place. We move to Gashie. Mm. And mm. so we stay in Gashie for years. Mm. And so during those first few see January has passed. We are now in Feb. I get a phone call from one and only DJ Styles. Styles Styles calls me. Styles calls me and says, "Hey, what's up? I'm good. Uh, do you know who's calling you?" And I'm like, "No." <laughs> I like Styles. Styles says, "You need to have my number." <laughs> <laughs> oh, Styles, I love that man. Oh, Styles, you need to have my number, bro, man. Yeah, this is a number you need to save. <laughs> so he introduces himself and then he tells me, um, You know you're the only gospel DJ I know, right? I'm like, yeah, "Okay, it's an honor, bro. This is it. You'll be called for a screen test on KTN. Go." And true oh. to his word, a few minutes later, Anthony Diema calls me. 